My name is Jim and I'm inviting you to follow me on a 370 mile solo kayaking adventure down the Mississippi River. The series will show you how I selected and rigged my kayak for long distance expeditions. I'll show you simple and almost guaranteed methods for catching all the fish you can handle. And I'll share what I learned about camping along the banks of the mightiest river in North America. Get stuck in the sand. Whoa! All right. Oh, damn! That sharp piece of rail right there just cut a hole in my damn leotard. <laughs> Gonna get out of here and see what's going on. See whether I want to cut across this channel or not. I think that I do. A couple of boats down there about to make their way up, but I'll I'll beat them across. make this point turn left and see what's next I can see it from some way back but now I'm coming across this uh, it's a massive power plant I want to really camp near it see that plume of smoke just about dead ahead yeah that's uh, that's a big-ass power plant I do not believe I want to camp within sight of that thing so that means we got to push 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 to get past it and get away from it Growing up, I believe I was in high school when I read The Hunt for Red October by Tom Clancy. And if you haven't read it or seen the movie, there's a tactic that the Russian submarine commander uses to stop and see and listen if there's an American submarine on his tail. And the maneuver is called a Crazy Ivan. <laughs> and apparently, when they would uh, pull this maneuver, the sonar man on the American boat would say, Crazy Ivan, Crazy Ivan, and they would stop everything dead because they knew that submarine was turning around to see if there was anybody following it. Well, when you're kayaking along and you're uh, maybe thinking about sticking your nose in the channel, it's always a good idea to just every once in a while just stop, Crazy Ivan. Stop, take a look, take a listen. No problem with looking both ways. Just try to get a sense if there's anybody coming down the pipe. I don't hear anything but that one tugboat that passed me a while ago, way off in the distance downstream. I don't hear anything coming from upstream. So I feel pretty good about the next half hour at least. That's a good little something to do every once in a while, just to get your sense and your bearing, see who's around. Every half hour, pull a crazy Ivan. That's a good rule. Unless it's a real busy shipping day, then you should be looking around all the time. Now, the lazy way to do it is to film yourself saying something <laughs> or use your, use your selfie camera anyway to look behind you like a rear view mirror. And there's nothing back there. Anyway, food for thought. All right, you see that little cut in the trees right there and these wing dikes right in front of me? Somewhere in here is my camping spot. I think it's gonna be the farthest dike, but we'll see. This is gonna be a good spot if I get it right. So this one's pretty good, but it's not good good, you know? Let's check the next one. All right, we're gonna see what this next wing dike here is gonna bring behind it. This looks pretty chill. I don't know about the fish in here. We'll see. We'll see. Earthworms shall produce. <laughs> they always do. And uh, well, that's if my earthworms are still alive. I haven't checked on them in a few days. 
One man Thanksgiving, hey, hey, we're gonna do it right. All by myself. <laughs> This Thanksgiving, I'm thankful for this little blue cat so I didn't get skunked today. So we're gonna let him go free. Pretty little guy. Oh, there's a fish. Come on, buddy. I'm just gonna let you go. What are you? Blue cat. Yeah, you're lucky. You're lucky. We already had Thanksgiving. It was just mashed potatoes. Oh, dude, you would, you're lucky I didn't catch you before I cooked dinner. Hey, five pound blue cat. He'll be just fine. Storm's coming in. Time to batten it down again. Use your waterproof bag as an ottoman. And just let your feet hang here and dry. Pull them inside later. Damn, that's a sandy foot. I'm like a sugar cookie. Hot broth, lots of condensation. I also drug in a whole lot of water with me. Running out there to check and see if my phone was out there when it was already in here, it's ridiculous. Now listen to me, if you have a snotty nose or anything, you make that really good broth, but you put like six or seven dashes of Tabasco in it. Oh, oh. Not only does it make the flavor like more rich, but It'll clean out your nasal passages. You'll, you'll uh, thank me later. Wet and crappy days. Oh. One of the things that I really appreciate about this hull design is the fact that it's got a point at the bow here that helps it track really well, and the tunnel hole behind it gives it the stability. Yeah, I can't stop singing the Simpsons thing. I'm almost packed up, taking my time. This is a fine, fine morning, enjoying it, enjoying it. River's like glass, it's gonna be a nice paddle. Right down there, about six, seven miles is the town of St. Joseph. Might uh, pop in there, see if they got anything at a local general store I wanna check out. Pull right away from the shore. Shore, he says. I mean, it's just glassy out here. I don't know if you can see that up ahead. That granary, whoop, spinning out. That granary up there. That's what we're, oh, I can't sit still. I screenshotted the location coordinates here for any paddlers that are coming through. Over here, some gents left his fishing boat and the way is well-traveled to it down this hill. So I'm assuming he's getting in and out of here no problem and I can do the same. Those are the only clues left to me. So I'm gonna give it a shot. All right, hold tight till I get back. I got all my super valuables on me. This looks like a scene out of The Walking Dead. Goes right to a roadhead, getting slightly more civilized. Oh Lord, here you just come right across. Just come right across. Huh? What are you doing, sweet baby? Are you a sweet baby? It's okay. It's all right. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to hurt you, sweet baby. Yeah, this is the best place I've stopped by far, bar none. Fantastic. Number two is me. Look at this, I got a nice patio furniture out here. Oh, isn't that cute? Cute little room. I don't know where the light switches are. So let's try that. Bing, bright idea. 
This is cool though. I'm down. Got a shower. Oh, look at that. Got a whole bathroom and everything in there. saying and i've been saying since i got here and i've only had one plate full but the boudin balls in this establishment are the finest i've ever had and i've had them everywhere anywhere there's boudin balls on a menu i eat the boudin balls you could say i've had a lot of balls anyway i'm here with two uh, subject matter experts and they tell me that people come far and wide to get these boudin balls they're after your balls they are, they are. <laughs> so i've got montana and amber here how long you guys have been open what maybe a few months right no how long? Since Monday. Since Monday? Since Monday. It Since is now Monday. Friday. Since Monday. And we've been pretty slammed. Whose Every... recipe is it? It's my dad's. It's your dad's recipe. Mm -hmm. Damn, your my balls recipe. are giant. That's right. You thought this was Louisiana? Well, guess what? It's Nebraska. It's flat. You can hear a truck coming from four miles away. I love it out here. Love the people out here. I'm having a great time. Two days in this little town, and then we're on down the river. But I got Bates, and I got Ultralight Line, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Something else to note, I was offered rides from all sorts of people. Folks who run a hotel, the restaurant, customers that came in, lots of different folks are like, hey, I'll give you a ride down there. I kayaked in. It's not really fair for me to catch rides all over the place, right? So I'm just walking. Today, I only put in about three miles of walking. Not a big deal, but uh, I'm not paddling, so might as well walk. But catching car rides, getting an Uber everywhere I gotta go, I can't really, uh, I can't really do that. It's just the way it seems to me, I don't know. Oh, we got the baits. Oh yeah. Yeah, so between here and Natchez, we're gonna catch a lot of fish. We're gonna camp out, we're gonna fish hardcore. We got all the bait we need. The whole time I was in front of this granary, this grain elevator, or whatever you call it, barge loading facility from the past, felt like somebody was watching me. <laughs> I would turn around and those buzzards would have their eyes on my corpulent self dreaming about a snack. So leaving St. Joseph, had an absolutely wonderful time there. Stayed at a great place. I mean, really a fine establishment, excellent food. It was good to get some proper nutrition. The spot I was at was reasonably safe for the kayak. I brought all my expensive stuff with me after having eaten well, getting to know the little family and what's going on with that restaurant and their new business. And this is their first week they've been open. They're gonna get hammered come spring. You plan on getting a meal there, you better plan ahead because they've got an organization going on. Very, very nice. I don't have to be out of the water till the end of the month. What's today? The 26th? Yeah, 11, 26. All right, so I got four days till the end of the month. I want one or two good camps between here, St. Joseph and Natchez. I'll pull out at Natchez or Walls, one or the other. So let's find us a quality camping spot. There's an island around the corner. And we'll see what's beyond that if the island's not cool. Or you come around the corner and all of a sudden the whole world is chaos. There's no more knife river. It's just this beast full of tugboats that's trying to drown me. I'm really liking the looks of where the beach comes to an end and the woods start right up here. I think that's gonna be a good spot to camp. It'll give us some shelter from the wind. It looks like a good fishing spot, plenty of firewood. Plenty of flat spots to set up the tent. Let's go paddle up there and see what happens.
all day long. Keep hooking themselves. Another smaller fish, I think, fair to say. Looks like they're all the same size class, just hanging out on a bar over there. This one's a little better than the other two. Gotta be, right? Yeah, he's bigger. That's a bigger fish. Okay, we're gonna show you all. That's a little better fish, huh? That's a better fish. Mm -hmm. Definitely a better fish. Tumbling and rolling. Come in here. Nicer fish all together. Oh yeah, yeah they keep getting bigger. This guy's got the business about him. Good right there. Good right there. Hi, I'm your dentist. Aw oh, dude, now you got all sandy. How am I supposed to show you off to the people if you're all sandy? There we go. Ow, bitch. <laughs> you got me right down the edge of my knuckle. Ow punk ass catfish. I would be an absolute fool not to fish this full moon tonight. Largest, largest catfish so far. Ooh, I grabbed the uh, cowbell off the end of my rod, but this dude's giving me a fight. Oh, biggest catfish yet tonight. Come on down, special guest. I'm gonna let you go, I promise. Very angry. All right, I get it, I understand. That's a big fish. <laughs> this is a big blue cat. I'm not gonna weigh him nothing. He's, he's 20 pounds if he's a dime. Don't bust my hand up, dude. I just wanna get this hook out, all right? All right, there it is. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him back as gentle as I can. He's more than 20 pounds, that's a big boy. All right, buddy, come on. Come on, big boy. Oh, look at you, big boy. Come on. Oh. <laughs> big catfish on an earthworm. Yeah, yes, yes, yes! Let's have a cocktail or four and, and then we'll go to bed. How are you? You on the journey too, huh? Ha <laughs> ha, how about that? Yeah, we're getting it done, folks. <laughs>